Hey, it's Brewbird. Welcome to the Distilled Kitchen. We're in the Borders Distillery shop today where the lights are off and it's completely empty inside. Our shop was shut on March 23rd when the Prime Minister announced a nationwide lockdown and ordered all non-essential businesses to close in an effort to slow the spread of coronavirus. In this video, we'll be interviewing one of the four founders of the Borders Distillery to see what impact the coronavirus has had on UK distilleries and on Scotch whiskey distilleries in particular. So let's go! First off, could you please tell me a little bit about the Borders Distillery? So the Borders Distillery is uh, a new business founded in 2013 with the objective of building the first distillery in the Scottish Borders since 1837. We completed the fundraise in 2015, bought the building and spent two years renovating it and installing the distillery. Our first distillation was on the 1st of March 2018. Okay, and can you please tell me a little bit about yourself and how you became involved with the distillery? So my name is John Fordyce, I'm co-founder of the distillery. I, fairly standard thing, university, lived all over the world, came back to Scotland in 2013 to do this, to do this job, to build this distillery. Mm -hmm. The lockdown is for three weeks, after which the government will decide whether it will be extended or not. John, how did this announcement affect the distillery? Well, we uh, immediately shut the visitor centre uh, and the shop, so that stopped all forms of public interaction. We then waited until the government issued guidelines under which uh, you could continue to produce <laughs> in distilleries. And once we'd satisfied ourselves that we could meet the conditions established by the government, we determined to carry on producing spirit, but only producing spirit. Okay. What do you mean by that, only producing spirit? Well, so we have no commercial transactions, we don't, uh, nobody comes into the building, okay. nobody comes into the shop, nobody comes into the business centre, it's just our distillers <laughs> producing spirit. Okay, thank you. And how, prior to the lockdown, was the distillery operating normally or were you already making changes to the day-to-day -day operations? No, we were, we were operating normally. Uh, we were running um, at the rate we want to run at at the moment. We had a lot of people coming to the shop. We were attending events, we were promoting. We had just launched our new vodka, Puffing Billy. Steam vodka made here in the distillery. We literally just launched it before the, uh, the lockdown happened. So things were carrying on as normal. Yeah. What new rules has the Scottish government imposed to allow the continued operations of the distillery? Okay, so there are four criteria which you can decide on. The first is that no member of staff can come to work using public transport. No. Oh. The second is that within the distillery, the rules of social distancing, which apply to everybody in the country, must be applied. The third uh, is that it can only be done with the agreement of the staff with all due consideration of health and safety. And the third is that we can apply the same disciplines to our supply chain. So in other words, what we're doing isn't putting other people in a difficult position. So you said the third rule, it has to be done with all the agreement of the staff? Yes, yeah, so if nobody that doesn't want to come to work doesn't have to come to work. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What did he say again? If nobody that doesn't want to come to work doesn't have to come to work. You mean I've been going to work all this time when I didn't have to? Hmm. So some of our staff, for instance, we have one member of staff who's a category one risk. Mm -hmm. So he's on furlough. We have another member of staff that's a bit older than the general age of the team, mm -hmm. so he is on, on, on furlough. Mm -hmm. And then we have the person who's our front of house, mm -hmm. she is on furlough. Anybody else not in production is working from home. 
Like John said, two of the members on our team are considered more vulnerable. And here on the government website, we can see a list of people in that category. The NHS sent out letters to these people a few weeks ago and asked them to self-isolate for at least 12 weeks. They aren't supposed to leave the house, even to buy groceries or medicine. Instead, they should have someone deliver those things to their homes. And can you um, tell me a bit more about the social distancing rules? So the social distancing rules are common for everybody in the United Kingdom at the moment. So you must maintain two meters, you must pay constant attention to where you are relative to other people, constant focus on washing your hands, using sanitizer where you can. So all we're doing is applying the same rules inside here that apply outside. So do you have any other new work measures that in place to help prevent the potential spread of the virus among employees? Other than making sure that the only people are in the building are in the production area, one in the mash house, one in the still house. Mm -hmm. uh, we have enough loos to make sure everybody can use separate loos. We have enough areas for rest and recreation. So like everybody else, we're just trying to apply the maximum amount of common sense to obey the guidelines established by the government and, and just as important to respect the spirit of what the government wants us to do. So uh, that, that for me is, the, is really essential. And so hypothetically speaking, if one of your employees told you that he or she was showing signs of the coronavirus, what would the distillery's next steps be? We would lock down uh, and everybody would go into self-isolation for 14 days. Okay, the entire staff. I mean, the, the rules are extremely clear. Okay. Um, okay. And how have your whiskey, gin and vodka sales been impacted during this time? Well, we're not selling anything. Um, okay. We have a little bit of business online. We have uh, some customers from the eastern part of the globe as they leave the pandemic, they're taking more interest in, in restarting business. But this thing has gone like a wave around the globe mm -hmm. and commerce will recover, we think, in a wave going around the globe, you know, following the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, and when do you expect sales to normalise again? Do you have a... Sales to normalise? Yes. I think it will take a while. Um, the, the necessary supply chain between producer, distributor, wholesaler, retailer has been very badly disrupted everywhere and it will take a little while for things to settle down. Okay, and so a global economic recession is consi considered inevitable yeah. due to the virus. Yeah. So how do you think this will impact your business in the long term? Well, Scotch whisky is a global business, so Scotch whisky is available in 190 countries and territories around the world, and we're a 96% export business. So a global recession isn't great news. Mm -hmm. I think that there is a amount of confidence that the response by governments will be to enable trade, to enable the economic stimulus, and to enable people to get back on their feet. And our performance will, will mirror the success of doing those three things. So in that sense, we're the same as everybody else. Running a new business is always challenging, and I can't imagine how hard and difficult it must be to run a business during a pandemic. Business-wise, what are you most afraid of happening during this pandemic? The worst thing that could happen to us right now would be if we had to cease production. Um, whilst we can obey the rules and the staff are happy and committed to making spirit, we'll be able to keep going. Um, not producing uh, spells trouble uh, for any, any distillery and especially a new one. Right. So, keeping up with that, if you were, hypothetically speaking, forced to close for several weeks, what would be the long-term impact of this? Well, we wouldn't, we, we wouldn't feel it in immediately, mm -hmm. but because it takes 
five, six, seven, eight years between your production date and your, your revenue coming in, any interruption to your future revenues uh, is a blow to confidence of your customers, your distributors, your shareholders. So maintaining production uh, as we are doing is really the key to maintaining confidence in the business. Okay. And how well do you think the UK government has responded to the coronavirus compared to other countries? I think the UK government and the four nations within the UK are doing a good job. Uh, from our perspective, the guidance is clear. It, uh, it's adapting to the circumstances. Having lived in many of the countries where the pandemic has been particularly strong, I don't think you can make an accurate comparison between one country and another. The, the effect of this is felt very differently depending on your cultural circumstance, your demographics, how it started, when it started, who had what at the time you picked up the problem. But from our perspective in the UK, with the UK business and members of staff, I think the UK government's doing a fine job. Do you think that many smaller distilleries will be forced to close their doors permanently due to the economic impact of this virus? Well, we're one of the smaller distilleries, so I, I, I <laughs> hope not. Uh, uh, again, I, I go back to, I think if one can carry on with one's staff producing, you can build confidence in the future. And if you've got confidence, you can usually manage to survive. <laughs> I thought we were medium-sized. Well, didn't you? We're so new that we're in a small category. Okay. Okay. So here's a personal question for you. Mm -hmm. What's something you miss doing that you can't because of the coronavirus? In terms of work or in terms of uh, life in general? Work and uh, life in general. Well, they're both pretty much the same. Oh, okay. I mean, in work, I... I miss obviously in close interaction with 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 all of us in the team here okay. it's we're a, a small group of people and there's a lot of quite good fun goes on in the relationships between people and then it's the same thing i'm not seeing my family i'm not seeing my my children or my you know and, and so that is a sort of an isolating process which is but it's the same for everybody mm -hmm. so uh, but those are the things i miss mm -hmm. and last question what question should I ask you today that I haven't already asked? Well, most people are asking when this is all going to be over. Okay, so when do you think <laughs> this will all be over then? Like everybody else, I don't actually know. Um, I remember being in Hong Kong for SARS, mm -hmm. and uh, whilst this feels different to SARS, the, the, the rhythm and the cycle feel the same, and I would hope that we're starting to get back to to normal life bit by bit uh, from about June onwards. I, I, but I have no idea, and that could be wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Christy, it's an absolute pleasure. Okay, thanks. Thanks so much to John for appearing in this video. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below for more distillery, cooking, and cocktail videos. This is Brewbird reporting to you from the Borders Distillery, Scotland.